16, 17, and 18 in Hebrews chapter 2. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Wherefore, in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God. And that's our Savior, Jesus Christ. He was made of the seed of Abraham. Um, he took upon him the form of a servant. He made in the likeness of men. And the reason for that is he need, it's the only way he could have been a perfect mediator. It's the only way he could have, understand, he could have understood both sides of the problem. Man and God were separated because of sin. And so it needed one who perfectly understood God's side of the issue and perfectly understood man's side of the issue. And uh, an angel couldn't have done that. It needed to be God Himself. But of course, God didn't come down just in the form of the Spirit of God, but He came down in the form of a man. He came down in the person of Jesus Christ. And so the fact that Jesus had, not only was He perfectly God and all God, but He was all man as well. Uh, yet without sin. And uh, so he was perfectly equipped to be the only mediator, the only mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. And so here is our mediator, here is our faithful high priest, uh, and he was a high priest in things pertaining to God. In other words, his, his ministry is Godward, representing, speaking on our behalf in a sense toward the Lord. But notice what he accomplished in the end of verse number 17. Uh, and there's a period at the end of verse 17, so it seems as if the incarnation, God becoming a man uh, and becoming our faithful high priest, this is, the, this is the outcome of it, the conclusion of it in a sense, is that he did that to make reconciliation for the sins, for the sins of the people. To make reconciliation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself hath suffered being tempted... He is able to succor them that are tempted, to help, to comfort them that are tempted, because He also was tempted like as we are, yet He was without sin. And so we're looking at verse number 17 tonight, and that is this, the doctrine of reconcili reconciliation. This is an aspect of our salvation. You know, there's a lot of big words in the Bible associated with our salvation. Uh, redemption, justification, sanctification, propitiation. But reconciliation is an aspect of that also. It's a specific aspect. Salvation is, is not that it's complex, but it's, it's not a simple subject in the Bible. There are so many beautiful facets to it that by reading the Scriptures, we come to understand that on God's part, our salvation, there were many issues that had to be resolved. Because God is a holy God, capable of judgment, capable of wrath, capable of sending sinners to hell. But as we said uh, on Sunday, God is also a God of compassion, and He's long-suffering. And so there's the judgment of God, and there's the compassion and long-suffering of God. And so for the Lord to accomplish our salvation, there are many complex issues that needed to be resolved by God. It was simple as far as we're concerned. There was nothing left for you and I to do but to believe the gospel and receive our salvation. But on God's part, think about the difficult situation that God was in and what it took for one like the Lord Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to make reconciliation, to bring the sinner and a, and a holy God together in perfect harmony and fellowship. Uh, and so reconciliation is an incredible, an incredible doctrine in the scriptures. And, it's, uh, and when we look at it a little 